This Python challenge is called loops. We're going to explore how to loop through some values in Python. In the code editor, they are getting a numeric value for the variable n. And what we need to do is listed here under the task section. For all non-negative integers, which are less than n, we need to print that value raised to the power of two. For example, if n is equal to three, we need to find all the non-negative integers that are less than three, which are zero, one, and two. And then we need to print the square of each number on a separate line. So the first value, zero to the power of two is still zero. One to the power of two is still one but two to the power of two is four. If n was equal to five, then we'd continue three to the power of two is nine and four to the power of two is 16. So we don't include the ends. We go from zero all the way to the largest value that is less than n. And we're only dealing with integers. So this here is the solution. Remember that in Python, the indentation matters. Here I'm saying if n is greater than zero, which of course I don't really need to do that because in the constraints, they already say that n is going to be equal to any value greater than or equal to one and less than or equal to 20. But I'm just doing this um, to demonstrate how you could add a condition to decide whether or not to run a for loop because this is an absolute beginner tutorial. So now I'm saying for x in the range of zero to n. So for every integer, inside of the range zero to n, where n is not included, then I want to print that value, which is the value of x raised to the power of two. And here I have double asterisk, which is called the power operator in Python. So the value on the left is raised to the value on the right. Remember that in a previous tutorial, we looked at the range function in Python, and I already explained that it includes the beginning, the first argument, but it stops right before the end. So let's run this code. We've passed the test case. So this test case was for the value of five for n, and we got the same value as what they had here. Now let's submit this code, and we've passed the test case. So that's it for Python loops. If you like this Python tutorial, please subscribe to my channel, and I'll catch you next time.